If you have to work with dates in Excel, this video is for you. In part one of this tutorial, you will learn seven important date and calendar functions, which will help you to calculate past and future dates in Excel. Are you ready? So let's start. Let's make sure you get a firm grasp on how Excel treats dates in your spreadsheets. Every date in Excel is associated with a specific number. The number 1 represents the date of 1st of January 1900. Number 2 is then associated with the day after, which is the 2nd of January 1900, and this sequence goes on and on. You can check that by simply typing the numbers 1, 2 and 3 in your spreadsheet and I'll select that range and in the format cells menu, simply change the numerical format to a date format, such as this one for example. When you click on OK, you can clearly understand how Excel connects numbers to dates. With that in mind, let's now talk about the important function today. This function allows you to pull out from your computer calendar the specific number associated with today's date, and therefore it does not require any arguments. So let's insert this function in the cell C3 for example, and here all you need to do is to close brackets and press enter. As I'm recording this tutorial on the 27th of March 2023, this is basically the result returned in the cell. If I open this file tomorrow, guess what will happen? Tomorrow's date will be showing up instead. This function can be quite helpful when you need to create a countdown calendar, for example, as we will see in part 2 of this video. For sake of curiosity, in case you need to display the specific time you're in, simply use the function now. This function doesn't need any arguments either, and it will demonstrate your current date as well as your time based on your computer calendar and clock. So after inserting that function, make sure you apply the correct format so you can see both date and time here. Now an important set of functions to understand is the Excel calendar functions for year, month and day which are very easy to work with. In cell C4, we need to extract the year from these reference dates of cell C3. Now, in this cell C4, we basically need to insert the function year. The argument serial number is basically the dates from cell C3, so select that cell, close brackets and press enter. As expected, 2023 is returned. The exact same process can be done for the variables month and day using their respective functions, so insert the function month in the cell C5 where the argument is the same reference date from cell C3. Months are classified on an ascending order from 1 to 12, which basically represents the calendar months of a year, so as we are assessing the month of March, the number 3 is returned in this function. Finally, we can repeat the same process in the cell C6 using the function day and the number 27 is returned as expected. These individual calendar functions can be quite handy depending on the type of work you are performing. For example, you may need to perform a specific calculation related to a staff payment on a specific day of a month, so the function day can help you with that or you may need to perform a specific calculation regarding the annual tax assessment of your business in a specific month of the year, such as March or April. The function month might then help you with that. Now, in case you need to work the other way around, which is creating a specific date out of individual parameters of year, month and date, you just need to use the Excel function date. So, let's insert that function in cell C7. The arguments of this function are those three parameters that define a date. So for the argument year, we can use the value 2023 from cell C4. We can then use the value from cell C5 as the argument month, and the cell C6 as the argument day. You can then close brackets and press enter. The same original reference date is returned here. So if you manage to handle these calendar functions this way, it becomes very intuitive to calculate past and future dates in your Excel file, as we'll see next. So here, let's start by copying as values this reference date in the cell C13. Based on this starting point, 
We need then to calculate alternative dates such as 7 days ago, 3 months from now, 2 years ago, 32 days from now and 55 months from now. And this last one, I'll give you a bonus tip shortly, which will help you to make this calculation very quickly. One thing you can notice here is that this reference date will be the starting point for all the other dates below. Therefore, you can apply a combination of calendar functions to get the results you need. So, insert the function date in the cell C14 and pay close attention to the arguments you need to use, as your goal here is to make this function ultimately dependent on cell C13. So, for the argument year, insert the function year, and the argument of this function year must be the reference date from cell C13. You can then close brackets once to finish this function year and press comma to skip to the next argument of the main function date, which is the argument month. Here, let's repeat a similar process and in this case, use the function month, which is also associated with the same cell C13. Close brackets, press comma and insert the function day for this last argument, which is also linked to the same reference date. You can then close brackets once to complete this function day and close brackets again to complete this main function date and then press enter. The same reference date has been replicated in this cell. We will use the same logic for the next three functions, so press F2 in the cell C14 and use absolute reference on all arguments of these calendar functions. Let's then expand the same function down to the cell C17. With all your functions structured this way, it becomes easy to calculate alternative dates. For example, if we press F2 in the cell C14, we know the result of this subfunction day is 27, as that information is coming from the reference date. That result 27 is then the value used in this argument day from the main function date. Therefore, as we need a date which is 7 days ago, we basically need to subtract the number 7 from this function day. Excel then automatically calculates the correct date of 20th of March 2023. Let's repeat the same process to calculate a date which is 3 months from now. In this case, we need to add the number 3 to the argument month of this function date. If you need to identify a date which was 2 years ago, simply subtract the number 2 from the argument year of this function date. You can see this process is very flexible, so you need basically to add numbers to identify future dates and subtract numbers to identify past dates. If you want a date 32 days in the future, simply add the number 32 to the argument day of this function date and Excel will return you the exact date in the correct month and year. Now, here is a tip in case you constantly need to identify past or future dates based on a specific number of months. If that's your case, you can use the function eDate instead of using the combination of calendar functions which we did above. Let's insert this function in cell C18. There are two arguments in this function. A start date is basically this reference date from cell C13. The second argument is the number of months. In this case, we need a date which is 55 months in the future. So, type that number as a positive value here. Close brackets and press enter. The correct date will be displayed here. Are you enjoying it so far? So, don't forget to watch part 2 of this video where you will learn more about date functions in Excel. The link is on the description. See you soon.